give you guys some tips on how to grow your hair long. So first up, I want to start off by giving you guys a little bit of background info on my hair. So my hair is super long now. I'm 19 years old, but from about 13 to 17 years old, my hair was like this long and it stayed that long. So it wasn't short. It was definitely long hair still. But then I bleached my hair and I snapped some of the hair off when I bleached it. I remember I had a layer that was like this short because I had to get layers cut all through my hair. So I had really short layers and they just wouldn't grow out. But now my hair is like all the same length pretty much which is awesome and I've got a bunch of tips for you guys that I think can help you grow your hair out really long too so hopefully you guys do enjoy this video if you do don't forget to subscribe to my channel and let's get into it so this is something I'm a little bit nervous to like recommend online, but I did start taking hair, skin and nails vitamins and they worked for me. So all through year 11 and 12, I had super bad cystic pimples on my cheeks. I had to go to like a dermatologist and it was like really annoying and they were painful and they left scars and bumps and red marks on my face for ages, but I have cleared all of that up now. So if you are interested on a video on that, let me know, but that's not the point. The point is that while that was all happening, my nan actually recommended to me to take hair, skin and nails because she had had some in her cabinet. I thought, why not? I want to get these things off my face. So I went ahead and I started taking these hair, skin and nails vitamins. And about two months later, I realized, oh my gosh, my hair is growing so quickly. The cool thing about all that was that I could measure how quickly my hair was growing by how frequently I needed to dye it. Because if you didn't know, my hair isn't naturally this dark. I just like it to be this dark. And I used to dye my hair every like four to six weeks. And now I dye my hair every two to three weeks. Like seriously, at two and a half weeks, my hair is in desperate need of some dye. Bye. <laughs> Wash your hair, just don't do it daily. How frequently you wash your hair is different for absolutely everyone. However, I would recommend cutting back from washing it daily because as I'm sure you've heard before, washing your hair daily strips it from all of its natural oils, in turn, leaving it brittle and prone to breakage, which is something you want to avoid when you're trying to grow your hair nice and long and when you want to avoid trips to the hairdresser. So this one isn't necessarily a tip, but more a recommendation. Before you start this hair growing process, take a photo of what your hair looks like now. I feel like sometimes when you're growing your hair out, it feels like it's not happening. It's so slow that you can't even see the difference, but trust me, there is one. And if you take a photo, you can see it for yourself. And it's also super satisfying to just like whip out that photo and be like, hey, look how short my hair used to be, but look how quickly I've got it to this length. <laughs> I would say get trims just not as often as your hairdresser may want. I feel like getting trims is debatable. Some people say yes, some people say no, and I personally think there needs to be a balance. If I got trims as frequently as my hairdresser wanted, I'm pretty sure my hair would be shrinking, definitely not growing. I've also tried not cutting my hair at all, and I did that for like one or two years, and that didn't work either. That just made my hair stay at a standstill or pretty much not grow, but like grow super slowly. So yeah, that didn't work at all, and now I currently get my hair cut maybe once every like four or so months and that's perfect for me. The good thing though that I have noticed about getting a trim is it does make your hair look thicker, it looks more voluminous and it also looks shinier and healthier and because of that I get a lot more compliments on how long and lovely my hair is as opposed to just having long brittle hair. No one compliments that, trust me. Brush your hair for a few minutes before you go to sleep. So this is something that I've always done and I'm not sure why. I think someone might have told me when I was a little kid, like, brush your hair, it'll make your hair grow quicker. So I've always done it and I wondered why exactly this was meant to do anything and if it was true. So I jumped online and apparently it is true and apparently people have been doing it for like hundreds and hundreds of years. And essentially what it's meant to do is boost the circulation in your scalp, making for a healthier scalp and in turn making your hair grow quicker. I'm not going to tell you to stop using heat on your hair, but maybe just reduce how much you do use it. There are a bunch of ways that you can reduce the amount of heat that you do put on your hair. For me, I do like to straighten my hair every so often, so when I do it, I make sure to straighten it absolutely perfect on the day that I get out of the shower, and then it lasts through for the next couple of days until I wash it again. It doesn't stay perfectly straight for the whole three days because it doesn't stay straight anyway. My hair is so crazy, but it does stay smooth and put together, which is really awesome. And if you're someone that likes to curl your hair, I know there's videos on how to get that to last for couple of days as well. Another thing that you can do to reduce the heat on your hair is literally turn it down. I used to always use my styling tools with the temperature all the way up, which isn't necessary unless you've got like super thick, super curly or super stubborn hair. And of course you can go ahead and try out a bunch of heatless hairstyles. So if you're interested in me making a heatless hairstyles video on my channel, make sure to let me know down in the comments below and I'd be happy to make one. 
And that leads me to heat protectant. So this is the heat protectant that I use. It is the Tresme Keratin Smooth Heat Protectant. I really like this one. I've been using it for a couple of years, but aside from that, these things are meant to have like silicone or something in them. And essentially what that does is it creates a barrier between your hair and the styling tool, which is great because I don't want my hair to be straight on my flat iron anyway. And that reduces your risk of getting heat damage from that styling tool. And another cool thing about heat protectant sprays is they add extra moisture. So all of your natural moisture is evaporated in the process of styling your hair. So that is it for this video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also let me know if you did want to see a heatless hairstyles video because I'd be happy to film one. But until next time, have a good day. Bye!